All right, so you invest 50,000 US dollars into a bank account that offers an interest rate of 2.1% compounded monthly. Um, now, first of all, that doesn't mean you have 2.1% added on to your principal every month. It means every month you have one twelfth of 2.1%, little bits. Um, and so over the course of a year, uh, it actually ends up being worth more than 2.1% because you're getting a little installments. But just keep in mind, again, when something's compounded, anything other than yearly or annually, the percentage you see is being divided by how many compounding periods there are. In this case, it's growing over five years. Assuming you do not add or take any money out from the account, how much interest will you have earned after five years? And so for this, uh, we have a couple options. Uh, one is to use this formula here, which is just a variation of what we saw with geometric sequences. And so the future value equals the present value times 1 plus the rate divided by 100 to turn into a percent as well as divided by the number of compounding periods, the power of the number of compounding periods times the time in years. Um, and so in this case, we know pretty much everything we need to do this quite quickly. And so the present amount is 50,000. The rate is 2.1%, which keep in mind that divided by 100 just means percent. So it's 2.1 divided by 100. And K, the compounding periods, is the fact that it's monthly, so that's going to be 12. And so I can write this. The future value will be 50,000 times 1 plus the rate, 2.1 divided by 100 times the number of compounding periods, 12 times a year, all to the power of 12 times the number of years. Now, while this is great and all, one thing I actually like a little bit better, although the formula we're using here is what's directly in your IB booklet, um, personally, I'm not a big fan of this R divided by 100. Um, I mean, we're senior students. We should know that a percent can be written as a decimal. So instead of showing it as R divided by 100, I prefer to actually just think of R as the percent written as a decimal, in which case it looks like this. 50,000 times 1 plus 0 0.021. That is 2.1% already written as a decimal divided by the number of compounding periods to the power of 12n. They're all equivalent. You know, 0 0.021 is the same as 2.1 divided by 100. I kind of prefer that. That's it. Um, I keep forgetting that. We know the number of time. It's five years, so n is not a variable. n is five. Silly me. With that said, we can do all of this on our calculator quite quickly, uh, which doesn't quite give us the answer we want because we want just the interest that was earned. This will tell us the future value after five years, which is 55000 Five hundred and thirty and forty-three cents. I round it to the nearest cent. So I guess I really should say this is approximately that. And so keep in mind we are asking for how much interest, and so which means how much more did we actually end up with compared to what we started. And so I can see here the interest, therefore, is going to be this value take away the fifty thousand. So therefore, the interest is 55,530 and change minus my initial amount, which in this case, I don't need a calculator, is $5,530.43. That's how much money we actually made. That said, that was pretty quick. However, we could also use, and in fact, you're encouraged to whenever you want, use one of the applications on your graphing calculator for finance. Um, for this question, you may find it easier just to do what I did here, but for sake of showing us another way, um, I'll show you how we would get the same answer if we were using a TI-83, which is what most people have. And if you're using the TI-83 for a finance app, uh, you end up with these parameters you have to fill out. Although again, for a question like this, you may, better off, you may be better off just doing what I did before. Okay, so in this case, n is the number of compounding periods in total over the time. So it's five years times 12 compounding periods a year. So it's five times 12, or just 60 you can type in. The i percent, that's the interest as a percent, and so it's just 2.1. The present value, uh, that's what we're starting with. Now, if we write in 50,000, keep in mind, 
these applications kind of follow basic accounting principles. And this is not an accounting class. So without me going into too much detail, in general, if you have a present value that involves like an investment, how much money we're investing, uh, we actually make that negative. The idea is the present value is meant to indicate cash flow going out. And so if you actually have investment, that's money that's going in. It doesn't really matter as long as you make it negative um, and or realize our future value will end up being positive here. But if you end up, you know, it's without going and turn this into an accounting class, um, in general, you, it's helpful to remember that anytime we have an investment, our present value is an investment, we think of it as a negative number. Uh, cause that's, but with that said, future value, this is what we're solving for. So I'm just gonna leave that blank for now. P slash Y, that's payments per year. We're not actually making any payments per year on this, um, but I'm gonna put 12 because it's the same as our compounding. We are compounding 12 times a year. And in general, it's simplest just to keep these the same. Once you have all those filled in, you go to uh, FV, which is for future value, hit solve, and it will tell you this same number here. Now, with that said, for a question like this, you may be better off just looking at it how I approached it here. Um, however, this application here allows you to solve for any of these. And so for many of these questions, it's really, really advantageous to use this application, such as this next one. Determine the minimum number of whole years necessary to double an investment in an account that pays an interest at an annual rate of 4.1% compounded quarterly. So if we were to try to solve this algebraically, we could first set it up like we had before. Uh, future value equals present value times one plus the rate divided by 100k to the power of kn. In this case, the present value doesn't actually tell you, but what we do know is we want this to double. So in essence, we can think of the present value being any number we want. I like the number one. And if that's the case, when it doubles, our future value should be double of one, which is clearly two. You can put any number you want for your present value as long as your future value is double. It's hard, in my opinion, to not make it simpler than just one and two. So that's the doubling. The rate of interest is 4.1, and since I'm using this formula with it already dividing by 100, I'll just put the 4.1 here. Uh, we know it is compounded quarterly, four times a year, so this K should be a four. And we're trying to solve the minimum number of whole years, we're trying to solve for n. Now to solve an equation like this, uh, algebraically, you have to learn about logarithms and we have not, I have not taught you that. And in fact, if you are not, if you are, an a, if you are in SL of this course, you don't actually have to learn about logarithms much. Um, however, regardless of that, we're not there yet. And so you could solve this graphically. You could graph the left-hand side of the equation and just have say y equals two. You could graph the right-hand side of the equation and which would be y equals what you see here. And you could qu quite quickly get the answer. In fact, I have that in Desmos right here. And that's what we see here. You can see the left-hand side of the equation is what we see in purple, and the right-hand side of the equation is what we have in green. And I find where they intersect, and I see 16.993. So that's, I want the, number, the minimum number of whole years, so that's gonna be 17 years. So it'll take 17 years for this to compound, for this, right, for this to double. However, solving it this way requires us using graphing technology, which your graphing calculator can do, although we'll be talking more about that in detail in future lessons. And so in this case, Desmos is great. However, you may actually find it easier to not use Desmos in this case, and instead use that same application. So I'll get this set up. All right, so in this case, n, the number of compounding periods in total, is going to be five because, sorry, what am I talking about? I don't know. We, that's what we're trying to figure out. My apologies. Uh, we're trying to find out how many. So that we're going to leave, this we're going to leave blank. This is what we're trying to solve for. So I'll leave that for now. The i, the interest rate, is 4.1. The present value can be any number you want. I use one here. However, again, using these applications, we want to make that negative. The future value, we want to make it two. The future value and the present value should always be the opposite signs. And again, the reason behind it doesn't really matter um, unless you're going to take accounting classes. Payments per year, we're not making any payments per year, but in general, you want to make these the same. 
and compound per year, that is important. And notice in the question here, it says we're compounding quarterly. So we'll have a four here and let's make a four here. And then once you have that set up, you go to N, hit solve, and you will get the calculator telling you, you get 67.97 compounding intervals. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that remember, we compound four times a year. So this is not 67 months or 67 years. This is 67.97 quarters of years. And so this is essentially 68 compounding intervals. And if I divide by four, we get exactly 17 years. Because remember, we are compounding four times a year. And that's the answer we really want. And that matches up with what I saw in Desmos there. And unless we are compounding annually, this n will never be the same as our time in years. When we are thinking about something compounding every year, which is quite common as well, then our n is the number of years. Otherwise, we have to do, always think about what the compounding intervals are. For this last question, the rate of depreciation. In general, cars depreciate. Um, and every year, they can be modeled by losing a particular percentage of their overall value. So in this case, we have a car that was 45,000 Canadian dollars when new and is worth exactly half, 22,500 in five years. So what's its, what's its depreciation? Which means what is the percent with which this car loses? What value does it lose each year uh, as a percentage? And so as an equation, again, we can set this up. Uh, we can, if we want to go to future value equals present value times one plus R over 100k to the power of nk, we can use this. Uh, in this case, our future value is 22,500. Our present value is 45,000, if we think about it being new. The rate we don't know, divide by 100. k, that's the compounding int intervals. And it doesn't really talk about that here. In general, if you don't see any mention of how many compounding intervals there are, which doesn't really make sense for this because the value is not, we're not compounding every month or something. Just every year on average, it's losing some percentage. So in this case, if it's not talking about a compounding interval, we just assume it's one, which means I could put a one here or I could just not even write it at all. And same thing for the exponent. Uh, we have n to the times k, n times one, or just n. Oh, but silly me. Apparently, I'm a bit sleepy today. Uh, we know n. n is the number of years, and we know after five years, it's worth 22,500. There we go. Now, to solve this, al we actually can solve this algebraically with what you've learned so far, um, because the exponent is not a variable. The variable is, in, is right here. It's the, just the r inside there. You could solve this in a few steps. At some point, you'd have to use the fifth root of both sides to cancel out this power of five. And if that makes sense to you, you can try it. However, um, we have this application, and so I'm just going to solve it that way. We could also solve this graphically, graphing the left and right-hand sides. Ideally, you can think of more than one way. But in this case, uh, n, we know, is five years. And again, there's no compounding periods. i is what we're trying to find, so that's what we're trying to solve. Um, it's not really an interest rate as, it's, as it is its value is going down, but it's essentially what we're trying to find. The present value, uh, it is a, something we paid for, so you could imagine it being a positive number. It doesn't really matter as long as you make the future value an opposite sign. So if I'm going to make this positive 45,000, I should make this negative 22,500. Or you can make the present value negative and make the future value positive. It doesn't matter. I'm not making any payments, but it is compounding once a year because I'm trying to find out how much every year it's losing in value. So make these the same. And then solve for this. And when you do that, your application should tell you that this is approximately negative 12.9%, which means this car is depreciating at a rate, depreciates at a rate of about 12.9%, or we can just say 13% each year. 
I don't really need to have the negative here because when you say depreciates, that inherently means it's going down in value. What would be concerning is if I didn't have a negative here, that means I probably made a mistake somewhere because I know this should be losing value. That should be a negative. But because I'm using the word depreciate, I don't need to say it depreciates at negative 12.9%. That's a little bit redundant. Once we say depreciate, we know it's going down.